Hello, beautiful souls. Aurelia is back with me again, and we are going to be covering another virtue. We have five virtues to cover of the Order of the Blue Rose. So far, we have done truth and peace, and now it is harmony. Aurelia, are you with me? Hello, everybody. I'm right here, ready to go. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for sure her to have permission to show her face on video. <laughs> I'm waving to you like you can see me. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but in the meantime, we enjoy the frequency of her voice. And this is a this is a little bit of a special one because harmony is tied to two magnificent archangels. The first one is Archangel Gabriel and the other one is Archangel Ragel. R A G U E L if you want to look him up. And when we think about harmony, there's a lot of things that are harmonious in life. There are a lot of things that are disharmonious in life, but I'm going to hopefully give you some different aspects that will help you tie into harmony. So again, the two divine archangels in particular connected to harmony are Archangel Gabriel. And he was also the, the archangel that brings us the fourth ray of harmony the link to that video will be in the description box of this one. And then Archangel Ragel, who's almost always referred to as the angel of justice, fairness, harmony, vengeance, and redemption, which is quite a title, but it makes him like the Swiss army knife of exploring multiple layers of peace and harmony. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I know. It's like, okay, so you have all these things to deal with. Ragel, we're going to need you to come over here. <laughs> <laughs> and he's very excited to help. So Archangel Gabriel empowers you to complete a spiritual initiation. He invites you to accept that any conflict you're experiencing right now serves your divine purpose, eventually becoming fuel you need to be reborn, turning your pain into purpose. Isn't that awesome? Yes. We knowing there's a purpose to everything you've gone through. Yeah. You know, there, there's so much of the why when something happens, that's painful. And for me, there's a couple of things that help with the whys. One is, is it soul contracted? It just completely negates all the what ifs and the whys for me. And the other thing is that it's an opportunity for you to grow. It's an opportunity for you to expand what you have been capable of and, and grow in multiple infinite different directions. And that cannot be accomplished without experiencing the friction of that event. So turning your pain into purpose is a wonderful way to transmute the pain of the learning in that lesson. In terms of spiritual initiation, you're approaching, it may begin with feeling torn between two choices or realities. You may wonder if you have what it takes. And of course you do. The answer is you do. You discover your strength lies within you. And the process, being patient in the process is that you're going with the flow versus trying to force an outcome prematurely. And we all deal with that from time to time where you want resolution and you want it right now. I, I think that that's the, the 3D human in us. We want to make it happen. When the universe is asking you to number one, have faith and trust Number two, to realize that a lot of other things have to be in position for you to get that blessing. So just sit back, have faith, have trust, and it will come to you in that divine timing. Both Archangel Ragel and Gabriel advocate for balance in our life, seeking grounding to maintain centered and moderate our energy versus finding yourself in extremes of thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Embodying the flow practice will create your successful outcome more swiftly, more efficiently than trying to force something to happen immediately. 
While the mainstream is flooded with fear-based energy, harmony must be a priority. One can overcome the fear state without shutting down. Instead, by responding with self-love, send love to the situation, meditate, journal, dance, create art, listen to high-frequency music, exercise, take a salt bath, or take a long walk in nature. All with the intention of having balance and grounding your energy to regain your clarity. Archangel Rigel's role is to make peace and provide strength and balance on earth. That's a heck of a job. The guidance he provides allows for balance within yourself, within relationships with others, while living with integrity and a high moral standard. Let's talk about that for a minute. We've talked about truth. Truth cannot exist in the absence of integrity. We've talked about peace. Peace comes when you're standing in your truth. Now we're talking about harmony. And harmony comes when you're doing the work to give yourself the peace based on your truth to allow for the flow of energy to create a more harmonious existence. You see how these all really do depend on these other virtues. They're like pillars. They hold up the energy essence that is you. Do you have anything to add to that, Aurelia? Yes, I do. Take it away. <laughs> so talking about harmony, balance, integrity, your truth. It's the inner and the outer balance. If there's chaos in your environment, you won't have harmony within and vice mm -hmm. versa. If you're all jumbled up and concerned or worried or just got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go, you won't find the balance outside of you. Right. They have, they are, they're like the scales. They see the weights to find the balance there with the harmony. And in thinking about, you mentioned the pillars, truth, harmony, love, et cetera. I was thinking of it almost like of the DNA, the helix, how they, they come together, or even spaghetti. If you take it and you twist it and mix it around, they each, you can find each piece, but they all intertwine. They all go together and they make it so much better when they are together on their own. Right. Excuse me, when they are together then on their own. Right. Right. Archangel Rigel is especially helpful with souls who've been mistreated, gossiped about, endured the fallout of dishonest behavior. He helps to steer you down a path of honesty that brings justice to an unjust situation. No matter the injustice, Archangel Rigel will help you find love, compassion, empathy, and non-judgment for yourself and others. This is especially beneficial now. I have been the bystander. I've been the target of um, dishonest behavior, being gossiped about, you know, harmful and hurtful things that were said and have been said about me. And I had to grow, continue that growth into a place where I was no longer wanting to attack back in kind. I needed to rise above that and send those tortured souls love because in the end, that's what they really needed. And it wasn't easy to do prior to doing the work to grow and expand my energy out and my, my essence of who I am to encompass that level of compassion that allows for genuine, authentic, pure love to be sent to those that would send you harmful energy. But it has been very beneficial. It's been beneficial for myself and I believe for the collective because, um, I think that's like the art of war, right? When if you're boasting in arrows to each other, where in there is a space to heal. You're always on the defensive. And so it only gets squashed 
when one decides not to retaliate in kind, meaning to not send arrows when the, the arrows have been sent to you, but to return love. And so I definitely invite you, if you've been a victim of dishonesty and being gossiped about or have harmful things said about you, that you really do sit with the idea that doing that back to someone is just two negatives. It's just two negative events. And in order to truly heal and learn from that event is to send love because those that cause harm are themselves suffering. They're suffering souls. And when you are looking to help a world that is suffering, we don't need more suffering. We need more love. We need more compassion. We need more kindness. That is the true energy that helps to break that negative cycle. If I may with that. Yeah. So you mentioned, you know, two negatives. Yeah, only in math do those make a positive. That's it. Everywhere else, it's just more vitriol and it makes, you just feel yucky. It makes everything worse. But you mentioned a phrase, the space to heal. And that really caught my attention. Give yourself space to heal. Give yourself that gift and give that gift to others. Mm -hmm. From there, you can then, you can find that harmony, find that balance. But only when you do have that space, you'll hear a lot of people talk about, oh, I'm holding space for you. I'm holding space for so-and-so. You're allowing that person to have the energy about them to heal and not to have to keep going all of the time. That's a beautiful phrase. Yes, I agree. Archangel Raguel leads the angelic order of principalities known for restoring order in life. For example, one to develop spiritual practice of meditation, journaling, and serving others. Through this role, he can deliver guidance, fresh ideas, a new outlook, wisdom of balance in life. We did a video. I did a video um, a long time ago (laughs) when I first started, I think. It's called The Angelic Realm, and I'll link that in the description of this video as well. I have some channeled messages from the archangels, but I don't know, Aurela, do you have more you want to add before I get into that? Not yet. Okay. Stop me if anything catches your attention. There. Are... Okay. I'm going to preface this by saying when I asked for a message from the archangel for the collective, for the purpose of this video, um, I didn't expect it to be so comprehensive. <laughs> <laughs> They said, you wanted it. Here you go. But like I told Leah, when she was confirming for me, what was I supposed to do? Say that's too much? No. (laughs) No, no. Ask, you shall receive. It's beautiful and it's perfect. And so we're going to go with it. Okay. This is from Archangel Gabriel. Thank you, Lucy, for contacting me. I'm happy to give some collective advice on harmony. The key to having harmony is in one existence in their being, in their flow of energy, is to strive to be in balanced emotional state of peace, a state of unity when we obtain peace, unity and balance. It's very difficult to be disharmonious in that state. In other words, there is work that needs to be done in order to obtain balance, peace and harmony. Because you cannot have one in the absence of others. That is also true with the five virtues of the order of the blue rose. They exist in strength together. They each build off of one another. And in the absence of any of the one virtues, the flower is weakened and will not withstand the storm. Now it is simply a choice for the collective to make. How deeply do they feel about obtaining harmony? How deeply do they feel about obtaining peace and balance in their lives? Do they enjoy feeling the feeling of being off balance? When we consider what being off balance feels like, it feels unstable. It feels like you can fall at any moment. It feels like if any force is applied, you will tumble down. That is not a stance of power. That is not a stance of sovereignty, integrity, 
and authenticity. When we are acting in our power, our sovereignty and authenticity, we are standing firmly in our truth. We are balanced with a stable, strong footing anchored to the earth through our energy centers up to the divine for guidance and clarity. In that status, we are not easily knocked over. We can withstand the storm. It is in these moments where our truth, our wisdom, our strength, our integrity, our sovereignty are all defined and demonstrated. In fact, it comes with giving balance of energy to all the virtues and the shadow work that allows one to expand their soul out to embrace the shadows and the lessons from difficult opportunities. This is embodiment of the virtues of the order of the blue rose. So in order to have harmony, one must set their sights higher to encompass the five virtues of the order of the blue rose, be committed to doing the work that aligns to this goal while maintaining integrity. The end. Wow. <laughs> I know. I mean, just wow. Okay. We'll finish the video, <clears throat> rewind, listen again. <laughs> And I'll say wow. too, when we first were given the messages about the order of the blue rose, Archangel Gabriel was one that held, he holds the wisdom of the order of the blue rose. He's one that we were guided to connect with because of his wisdom and knowledge of the order of the blue rose. However, I didn't get a lot from him until today. <laughs> you weren't ready for, you didn't need it until now. Yeah. And <laughs> I think, you know, contacting him, I literally contacted him, which is, um, it's a little unusual for me. Typically the, my contacts initiate with me, but I initiate it with him. And I, I believe that opening and knocking, like knocking on that door, he was like, Oh, come in, come in. I have so much for you. I've been waiting for you to, <laughs> to visit. <laughs> get your feet up, get comfortable. Here's yeah. your cup of tea. Let's chat. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get into Archangel Ragales now, unless Aurelia has something to add. I, I can't add to that. No, not okay. right now. Okay. Archangel Ragales channeled message on harmony. Thank you, Andalusia, for connecting with me today. I do have a message for the collective when it comes to harmonious living. They have first got to choose to let go of the chaos that they have become addicted to. It has been so pervasive in your culture there on earth that with the absence of chaos, beings feel quite lost and detached. In my opinion, they should embrace that detachment as it sets them apart from the chaos out of the tumultuous winds, and then they can seek refuge in nature. They can ask for assistance in grounding. They can in tapping into the truth and wisdom that is offered to them, find happiness and harmony. I am happy to assist, but those who seek harmony will know it once their chaotic noise of your culture is removed from their being. That is easier said than done. I know that you have a different level of experience with this as you navigate assisting humanity to be clear and maintain their clear energy bodies. But there's many who struggle with the addiction, just like any other addiction. The being must choose to end it by weaning or cold turkey, as you say. Once the decision is made, the vacuum must be replaced with something beneficial, something positive that, that fills that void. Their cup must overflow in positive energy to leave them no area of weakness, which will open them up to allowing in more negative chaotic energy. This is why one benefits greatly by being supported in their journey as it does become lonely. There seems to be more chaos makers swimming around us than there are beings on a path of sovereignty, peace, harmony, love, etc. And in that sense of energy, it will feel like they're missing out on something until they fully detach and wean off the addiction to the chaos energy. 
the energy experienced from genuine love of the universe, genuine love of humanity, compassion, unity, empathy, balance, balance in all things. It takes work. It's not magic. It's absolutely possible. And the archangels are willing to assist in any way with the collective journey to harmony. End of his message. Another wow. Yeah. And that is so true with the chaos mm -hmm. because we're, we're, we're programmed that way in life. I don't think we come here that way, but we're taught that from a very young age, some more than others, you know, there's the difference between some families who go, 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 go every day must be full. And then you have other families who say, well, oh, once or twice a week, we do something, we, we live more slowly, we live more intentionally. Yeah. For those folks, I think it's easier to shut down the chaos and to go within and to find the balance for the people who have grown up or chosen, maybe they grew up in a small town and decided, nope, I'm going to go have the busy life. Yeah. Now that I'm on my own to, for those who have chosen chaos. Yeah. When you make the decision to say, no, I'm going to step away from this. You feel like something's missing. You feel like not necessarily that you're missing out on something else, but you wonder, well, what did I do? There's this void here. I'm not constantly filling things. So now what? And yes, you've got to have things in place, ideas in place, you know, a checklist of things or of ideas, I should say, for what you can do when, you know, yeah. think of like people who change their way of eating. Yeah. If they've decided I'm not, sugar doesn't benefit me. I'm going to stop eating sugar. Okay. Their body goes through a detoxification time when you yeah. really crave it and you want to decide, no, no, I'm going to push through here instead of that cookie. I'm going to go eat this apple or whatever yeah. the best choice for them may be. Understanding that it's not an overnight process, but it is progress with each decision. And one thing that helped me when I've made a very many life decisions, life changes, is to understand that there's, it only takes a few days to create a habit. However, it takes at least three weeks to undo a habit, 21 days. And so yeah. you give yourself that grace in finding your balance and allowing the chaos to process through you and out of you and search for the harmony. Yeah. And I've encountered that where, um, it's ingrained, it's ingrained in, in multiple generations of the family that you work, 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 work. And, um, that's how you gain your independence. That's how you gain your security. Like there's so many things that are, um, labeled with that hard work, that never ending work, that never ending, um, energy suck. But then when they, when they separate themselves from that and they start down their shadow work journey and they go, well, how come this is taking so long? <laughs> yes. And I'm like, well, how old are you? I mean, how many years have you put into this negative behavior? It's going to take some time. I, if you look at it in terms of, I spent 50 years cultivating all this negative energy. And now that I'm clear, so it's taken you eight, 10, 12 months to redefine what healthy boundaries are and healthy eating and healthy habits so that you let go of the non-serving ways, AKA old habits, and you have serving ways, which are new good habits. That's a pretty good trade-off. If you ask me in less than a year, you can undo the damage you've done in 50. Absolutely. But it's but not overnight. No, but it's the level of expectation of that magic wand effect, right? You yes. know, like, well, fix me. yes, tell me what to do and fix me or tell me what I need to, and that's not how it works. That's not how it works. So there's a level of understanding and I really do, you know, there's so much that we're taught. There's so much that we're guided to in our culture that 
that really does make you believe putting forth this manual effort, manual labor, um, running yourself ragged from five 30 in the morning till 10 at night is normal. It's not normal. It's not normal and it's not healthy and it causes more issues than it creates prosperity. Like, I just don't believe that people see it as that until it's too late. So choose your steps and your, and your options in life wisely, just because the masses of people are doing it does not mean it's right for you. In fact, I would venture to say that if everyone's doing it, it's probably not the best thing to do. Be the salmon swimming upstream. Yeah. Yeah. Be the bystander. Mm -hmm. We talked about this the other day. Be the one standing on the street corner wondering, is everybody a part of the fire department? You are all driving like you're going to put out a fire. (laughs) Because that's one heck of a fire department. (laughs) Instead, slow it down. Make it a priority to do the work that you need to do so that you can encompass and embody peace, that you can encompass and embody truth. And then it naturally leads to a harmonious life and better energy exchange with the beings, the people, places, and things in your life so that you're not inviting in chaos, which you have worked really, really hard to escape from. It's a choice. It's a choice like many other things like detoxing from sugar or Mm. letting go of caffeine habits easier said than done I know it but it's the payoff it's the payoff that you want for letting go of that addiction and addictions are everywhere there are all sorts of things it's not just alcohol and drugs and whatever you think mainstream addictions are there are definitely Mm. people that are addicted to their social media accounts there are people that are addicted to um, friction and fighting and having the last word. There are people that are addicted to the news and how unhealthy is that? I, I know that I deliver truth. I really don't want to be lumped into that category of like news, um, because it's so unhealthy and it's so untrue. And it leads to so many people being upset and nervous and frustrated and, angry. So I definitely don't want to be long them at that, but you have the option to turn off the noise, turn off the chaos. And that is what these archangels are asking you to do. If you truly seek peace and harmony in your life, then you have to be honest with yourself. That's where the truth comes in. Is what you've been doing serving you today? Maybe it served you yesterday. Maybe it served you six months ago but you're no longer that person and you want to give yourself permission, grace, mercy to change the things in your life that allow for positive changes to continue because it's real easy to get off course. It's real easy to jump right back into that traffic with everybody fighting to get to the fire first. But is that really going to make you happy? Probably not. Any last words there, Aurelia? I agree 100%. She is not being paid to say that. (laughs) Not at all. Uh, uh, These are fun. These are fun. Um, We have a few more virtues to go through, but I do invite you to violetlotusenergy.com. You can check out our services there, sign up for your QET session, get yourself clear on your energy and start down your own path, your own journey to ascension and making way through the chaos. I'll see you again next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.